Welcome to this first episode of Know Your Networks, the bi-weekly series that lifts the lid on today's telecom networks to uncover some of the key challenges facing carriers uh, when managing today's fast-changing networks. I'm Ken Gold, and along with Scott Sumner, we hope to enlighten, educate, and maybe even entertain you through thought-provoking and perhaps even controversial questions that challenge your perception of what's reality in today's network. And today's question is, with a shift towards automation, and artificial intelligence to drive service assurance and operations, why is your customer base still at risk? That's a great That's, question. <laughs> that is a loaded question, isn't it, Scott? Uh, so let's maybe put some context around that to help our, uh, help our uh, listeners figure this out. Absolutely, right, I mean, shall? there really is a trend out there, right? We know that operators are moving really quickly towards uh, leaning on AI and automation. Absolutely. To make the customer experience better. And everybody believes it's gonna make it, well, everybody believes it's gonna solve all the problems. Well, I think they have no choice, right? Because the, the complexity of the network means that without some sort of help, the humans that are running the network today are gonna be outnumbered. And Very I think true. And we're quickly reaching that limit. So let's take a look at some stats that, yeah. that underline that. Okay, so here's a, here's a number, 500. 500, yep. Well, 500, this is a really interesting stat. This is the average number of trouble tickets today in, in a network of, let's say, uh, 75 million subscribers. That doesn't sound so bad. It doesn't sound so bad, but actually there's something behind that. One Isn't of the it? things is that to get to 500 trouble tickets, you're probably looking at about 75,000 alarms, right, that have to be analyzed and brought into some okay. meaningful things to solve. Sure. So that's one problem, but I guess yeah. you're going to see uh, a lot of alarms. Uh, it's yeah. still not enough trouble tickets. Yeah, I mean, it's not enough. 50 million subscribers, 75 million subscribers, 500 trouble tickets. Oh, that, that manageable. Yeah, sure. that, that sounds pretty good. Sure, at BT, right? they have 50 guys in the knock, so they can take care of that 10 a day, one an hour, go home early. Done. Yeah, yeah no problem. Sounds at all. like no problem. Okay, so here's another number 38%. What does that mean? Well, this is really this is really where I started to get surprised when I started thinking about the statistic, right? Sure. Thirty. What does this mean? It means that thirty-eight percent of the trouble tickets of that five hundred would not have been identified if someone didn't call to tell the operations team. So that means their monitoring systems or service assurance doesn't see this at all. That's a surprising number. It's a large. It's a large amount for all the money that's Almost being poured 40%. into monitoring. Almost forty percent. Forty percent. So there's forty percent. Yeah. Yeah, they're sort of blind to fourteen percent. You would think by now we would be better at that. Well, you know, we're not we're not new at this game, right? No, it's not simple though. No, and, not. and of course, the networks are changing fast, and all kinds of stuff happening. So. Yeah, if, if this was the if this was actually how bad it was, I'd be really happy actually. <laughs> really? Yeah, no, it's much worse than that actually. Okay, well, let's do some math on that. So we had five hundred tickets, thirty-eight percent. Yeah, one hundred and ninety. One hundred and ninety would be good if every customer who experienced something actually called. But the problem is that customers are really I guess it's not a problem. If you're an operator, it's good that your sure. customers are very good at tolerating pain. Yeah. And you know that. There's yeah. times where you try to watch a video, it doesn't kind of work for you. You're not going to call the operator. No. But you get used to it. But Quite there's frankly. a lot of people, actually. What do you think, uh, Ken, is the ratio of how many people do you think actually call when they have a problem out of, let's say, out of 100? Boy, I don't know. I just, I know that I don't call, personally. I mean, it's very seldom I would Why ever don't call. You call? You think they're going to solve the problem when you call? You know, I think part of the problem is we've become numb to it. You know, yeah. at one time we expected five nines of availability. Now, you're saying we have low expectations? Yeah, I think yeah. I think we're okay. Oh, my cell phone, my call dropped. Oh, my call didn't go through. I'll try again. Yeah, okay. I just so don't worry maybe, about it. maybe that explains it, right? But so, the actual stati statistic for this, when we did a, a study with a heavy reading, is that it's really it's like one in two hundred. Wow. That's different if you have a billing problem. It's like one in twenty people. Sure. But one in two hundred, if it's actually a quality problem in the network. Right. Now that's that's a bit shocking because if you said, well, the 38% of the trouble tickets, 190 trouble tickets were because people called in, Yeah. but 200 times people didn't call in, how many people really had a bad day? Yeah, so yeah, that's a doing heck of that a lot math, more than 190 people. Yeah, that's 37,810 people. That's like a stadium full of people. Rush, who have had a rough a bad, number, bad right? Time. Yeah, yeah but it's still, a rough but number. Yeah, but yeah. out of out of out of 50 million people, that's. That's that's it's noticeable enough. now. You think okay, it's and and the worst and the worst part about it is you're saying, is actually that that means that there's a big chunk of trickets out there that you just don't know about. Yeah, yeah. You I just mean, don't it's know. Really, when we say 190 before. Yeah. Come from people calling in, so that means there was uh, was the rest. 300 and 310 tickets a day that come from the monitoring system versus right. the 38,000 that could have come in. Sure. Really, that the, the operator is about almost 99% blind to what's going on with the customer experience. Wow. That's incredible. You would think your perception is that's not the way it is. I know that number shocked me when I first heard it. You, when you first showed me that number, and I thought, that yeah. can't be right. It, Come it, on, it 98, 98%. Right. 98 
but you know it's well, right. Yeah. When you, well, what people don't tend to realize, I, I don't know, maybe it's just me. I saw churn stats. You know, you get a churn stat that, you know, Verizon, they had 1.5% churn. Right. It doesn't sound like a lot. Then somehow I realized along the way that that's every month. Oh. So at the end of the year, you're looking at like 20 to 25% in some of the best networks in the world that are leaving for another network. Wow. And you think uh, that might be a, a serious problem, but I guess why is this churn happening? It's, it's because we were looking at the numbers there, about 5% of the subscribers are experiencing these degradations every day that mean they can't get stuff done they want to do, right? right? So it might not be a total outage, yeah. and it might not be all of us at the same time, but sure. if, if I'm experiencing 15 or 20 minutes of like frustration with, the, with my network, it, it gives you a chance really to think about whether you might want to change to another network. Right, and of course it's getting easier to change all the time. Oh yeah, you know, it's, you, a, it's an easy thing with, to do. It's just a cell phone and local number portability, you can change in a, in a moment. I think, I think what you'd find actually is that it's about three times easier to change than it is to call your operator and tell them you had a problem. I mean, exactly. To yeah. me, I'd rather talk to somebody who's gonna sell me a better service than go complain about one I don't think they're gonna be able to fix. Well, that's might true. Even see. That's true, and yeah, yeah. So, and, and, and since we see that there's so many outages and, and, and troubles within the network that are invisible, it doesn't give you a lot of confidence they're gonna fix it when they call. No. Because they don't know about them. You know what this means, right, 5%. 5% means that every person in the network experiences this like every 18 days. Sure. So every 18 days, 20 times a year, you have the chance to reconsider whether or not you like your provider. And that's why there's such a high churn universally. Yeah, and From an operator true. perspective, the penalty is, is extremely, uh, it's extremely dangerous right now because sure. revenue is going down, average revenue per user is dropping, uh, free cash flow is required to finance 5G. Yep. But if you're paying to reacquire 20% of your user base every year, you're running out of cash. That's and a, that's exactly the thing, right? We yeah. know that customer churn is the single biggest expense of an operator after the network itself. It's an extremely sure. high load on them. Sure, and we're hearing things like this, right? 88% yeah. of the people leave because of poor quality of experience. Amazing, huh? Yeah. It's easy to believe if you keep getting these outages all the sure. time and there's no way to really know if it's just you or why they're happening. Yep, and it's more than just voice, obviously, because if it was just voice, you probably wouldn't care. Yeah, in but fact, I think it's not even largely voice at all. Yeah, I think it's, it's about 80% is, is over the top video streaming performance. Exactly. Stuff that can't be measured at all for many, many reasons. Too. Right, right. That's uh, that's interesting. Okay, so all that sums up. So uh, we got a lot of unhappy customers out there, don't we? They're tolerant, but they're not happy, and I guess they keep trying to find something a little bit better. So I think anybody who can really embrace AI and machine learning to truly solve the problem of right. detecting what each individual is experiencing is going to have a significantly greater chance at market share growth. Right, right. So it sounds like simply embracing AI and machine learning to automate service insurance, that's, that's just not going to cut it. It's not going to be enough to, uh, to keep customers happy. I think a lot of operators have realized that. I think it's around 69% have come to the conclusion actually that machine learning and AI are critical, but they can't actually implement that until they have the visibility they need to see things in real time with each subscriber individually. And that's really the visibility gap that will help all the rest deliver on its promise. Right, right, right. Yeah, you can't forget that, right? You can't forget, it's not just getting a machine to help you. You still need humans in there to, to help along the way too, so. Okay, well, that's it for today. We hope you enjoyed listening and just maybe learned something new and insightful. If we've managed to challenge your perspective, or if you simply want to comment on what you've heard, please do so in the comments section. Join us again in two weeks when we'll ask the question. Your knock is struggling to keep pace with network outages and your war room just isn't working. Is it time for a change? If you enjoyed today's show, please like us and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you.